fabulous shot. Live from the Rio All Suites Hotel and Casino from Las Vegas, Nevada. It's one loss round action at the WPA Men's World Ten Ball Championships. Joining you today, my name is Keith Paradise. I'm a writer with Billiards Digest, and sitting next to me is one of the best young female players in the game today, Miss Christina Takach. How are you today, Christina? Good afternoon, everyone. I just had a great lunch, so I'm good. Are, are you are you caffeinated? Uh, and well rested because yes. we we did the 9 p.m. match yesterday and, and both of us were on the struggle bus a little bit as, as the uh, hours got a little bit later. Pretty good matchup here. We have Ko Ping Yi, a former world champion, going up against Jesus Atencio. This again is a one loss side matchup. Both of these players lost early on in the tournament and the winner of this match uh, is going to face no easy task. Winner of this match goes on to play Francisco Sanchez Ruiz, who lost earlier today to Levon Curteza. Opening break by Atencio and pockets a ball on the break. Where do you think he's going with this one ball? Do you think it's going to be a safety or is he going to try and slide it into the side pocket? I think he he can slide it in. Uh, it's it's again hard to say from this angle, but maybe he can make it and play a lot of right spin and kind of go in between three and four, play position for the two. But maybe he has way too big angle and he just simply can't do it. The other concern I would think is if he tries to slide this into the side that. Ooh, he played off six. Played off the six and left it hanging in the corner pockets. And now we're going to see Ko Pin Yi for the first time. I think he can see full ball. Looks like he can see the full ball. A little bit of traffic to navigate to get back for that, too. a long sharp cut on the two ball we'll just probably roll the two ball in and leave the cue ball on the opposite long rail with a straight in three ball into the corner open you no stranger to this tournament he won the world 10 ball championship in 2015 as he rolls in that two ball as Christina talked about Won the World Nine Ball Championship in the same year. Talented junior player as well. Won the Junior Nine Ball Championship in 2007 and 2008. Pockets the three ball in that corner pocket. He'll now try a sharp cut on that four into the same pocket. And then roll the cue ball back across table for position under the six. It was a good view on uh, Kopin Inak, if you could see how much his vein was <laughs> bumping. So the pressure's there. What caught my eye was, did you see how much gold ornamentation is on that cue? Oh, yeah. You know, whenever he travels, he only sp always put this uh, air tra uh, backtrack mm -hmm. trackers uh, by Apple mm -hmm. in the, his the suitcase. The air tags. Yeah. In in his suitcase, so wherever he goes, he knows where his suitcase is because this cue is quite expensive. Yeah. For those who don't know, Koping Yi and his brother Koping Chung, also known as Little Co, they're both sponsored by Zen Cues. If you don't know anything about Zen, um, it'd be cheaper to purchase a nice used car than it would a Zen Q. They're very expensive. They retail for 
the ten to twenty thousand dollar range. Yeah, as Co takes advantage of that missed one ball by Atencio and clears the deck and takes an early one nothing lead. I'm sorry, I interrupted you. What were you going to say? No, I, I just I, w I wanted to say because they add a lot of uh, gold and diamonds and some expensive stones well, in this queue. That's that's why it coats so much. A lot it's of art. A lot of art. Like a jewelry. Yeah, a lot of artwork, a lot of craftsmanship, and there is a lot of precious metal and other materials in there. Sizes up to break. And this will be Ko's first break of the match. Balls didn't find Got any a good bucket. spread, but no balls found any pockets. And Jesus Atencio will come to the table with what looks like the ability to hit the one, but no real pocket for it. Or is it? No, that's blocked by that seven ball. Yeah, I think. Uh he will play. Oh, he can't see the ball. He called the push. Is he going to push for the jump? <coughs> Looks like it. Looks like it. And uh, he can't do much. Definitely covered by that five ball. I can't do much in this situation because four ball is, uh, one ball is hanging next to the pocket, so it's going to be really hard to play a push out in this position. Co called for the one in that corner pocket, and if he makes it, depending on where the cue ball goes, there's pretty good position for that two in the side. Makes it, and now he has pretty good position for that yeah, two in the corner. He's trading on a two ball. So Atencio gambles with the push out and he's unsuccessful. Coping Yi looks like he has a pretty good roadmap to a two nothing lead. The only issue I have in here is the five ball. I'm not sure if it passes the ten to go in a, in a corner pocket. If no, he has to do some job in here. And you could see in, in the spectators' arena, Lil Ko, Kapin Chung, and Kapin Han is always coming to watch every match of each other and support. It's very, very nice. They are nice. very supportive of each other. Yeah. Both Ko brothers have a World 10 Ball Championship. Ko Ping Chung won his in 2019. And I was here for that. And during the finals match against Joshua Filler, each time that Little Co took a time out for a bathroom break, his brother walked yeah. with him and they went together. And his brother was keeping him loose and keeping him focused and, and just basically giving him a pep talk. Yeah, it was, it was I think it's roll, very sweet. Do you roll onto the 10 ball for a safety here? I that was his plan, but... Yeah, I mean, not really roll, I guess, but more like a stun follow, but... He neither stunned nor followed, and you can see by his body language he was not happy with it. And I believe he left an open shot for Jesus. Just to stun the cue ball into the left side. Maybe bump into the seven, depending how big of an angle he has. Seuss is another very talented player, youngster. Oof. As he scratches into the corner pocket, they're pocketing that five ball. Yeah, you mentioned him being a talented young player. Um, Atencio earned $27,225 last year 
in prize money according to azbilliards.com. Another one of these up and coming players that the only thing they're missing is a big victory at this point. He's coming yeah. in, you know, top five, top 10 in a lot of events, just hasn't notched that big major win yet. He was fifth at last year's Predator Wisconsin Open. He was third at the Puerto Rican Open, and then he finished fifth in 2021 at the uh, what was then the Diamond Las Vegas Open. So definitely a talented player who has a lot to offer. His co works his way through the rack, and now there really doesn't look like there's any interference anywhere. No. So you don't want players this caliber to feel that comfortable on table and try to put the pressure on them right away at least punish for their mistakes, so. Okay, guys ahead two to nothing. If you're wondering how these players got to this stage in the tournament, Ko did not get off to a very good start. Lost his opening round match to Ching Ting Tang eight to five. And then his first match on the one loss side, he defeated Petri Mackinen of Finland, but needed to really work to do it. Defeated him 8 7. A little bit easier time in the next round against Long Duck Thien. Defeated him 8 to nothing. And that set him up for this matchup with Atencio. Atencio opened the tournament by beating Matus Snagaki 8 3, then lost to Khalid Algahandi 8 4. Then he went on to beat Gerson Bosa, 8-4 of Peru, to set up this matchup here with Ko, who's set to break in the third game. And again, makes a good spread of the balls. Was unable to pocket the ball on the break, and Atencio will be coming back to the table with Again, no real clear shot on that one ball. Again, looks like he's calling for a push out. She's trying again to push for the jump. He did. Almost like challenging him. Can you make this one? Ko not taking any chances this time hands the table back to his opponent, who does have that jump cue out. And I'll tell you, probably after Federer, he's one of the best jumper in the world. He definitely knows how to use the short cue. And he proves it right away. I was going to say, made you look really good. And he has good shape on that two ball. You see the replay. Not even any question of whether or not that ball was going to go in. Just really needs to back it up a couple inches here for position on the three. Flirted with trouble there with that four ball. I think he should have been fine. So, in a corner. Or might be in a side, might be in a corner. I'm thinking corner and then leave the cue ball right where the four ball is for the five. Yeah, and then play three rails around and bring the cue ball back center of the table. This is a table quite familiar to the Ko family after today. Ko Ping Yi's brother, Ko Ping Chung, played and defeated Eklan Kachi in an earlier match today, 8-3. To Satansio great. But excuse me, Atencio goes three rails over for position on that six ball in the corner pocket. 
Whoever cut the five ball by a little bit, but I think it was on purpose. Yeah. But now he has shaped to play the seven ball on the side. Back up just a little bit for that eight in the corner. A stop shot will get you home on the nine. It's, it's, when the game is late like that, it's a pleasure to play. Yeah. And even, and even a bigger pleasure to talk about because there's nothing really to, 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 uh, <laughs> to really question about what he's going to yeah. do or how he's going to do it. As Jesus Atencio gets on the board, jumping in the one ball after a push out. And we'll be back after these messages. back to live action here at the Rio. Jesus Atencio just got on the board after a push out. He now trails two games to one in this race to eight. One loss side matchup with Copin Yi. Looks like he took a little bit off the break on that one. He was able to pocket a ball. He has a clear path to the one ball. You see that eight and that five are guarding any shot at the side pocket. So what do you think in here, Christina? Safety? I think so. I just don't see why he would take any risk trying to make the five ball or something else. So it's pretty good safety shot. Nice. There's a nice pack of traffic between him and that one ball. to not have that go in. It was very good calculated shot. He wanted to go three rails behind the one ball to get lucky and he did. Now he not only has to keep the one ball but also watch out for the side, side pocket. pocket. Right. Oh. Look at that, <laughs> Beautiful. The bad news is he sold out the one. The good news is there's not much you can do with that two beyond playing safe. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe the side pocket, but that's a. Maybe side pocket of the five. Maybe he'll just bring the cue ball near six ball and try to play the safety. Let's see, there's a lot of options in here. I think he's looking at deep. Oh, he's actually looking to play two below the five. The only thing he has to take care about in this case is getting off this traffic of six and eight. There's also the question if he is going to try and pocket this ball, which it looks like that's what he's measuring up. Can you get across table for that three? I would imagine getting the right kick off the eight ball would get you across the table. See, he can really play hard because it's a side pocket, and you know how it is sometimes, side pockets. 
you play hard, you might rattle the, the ball. Well. Would we consider that a two-way shot? Yeah. Look more like a safe to me, just based on where he left. Yeah. But if he would made the ball, he would be in trouble because right, three balls hooked. So it's a good thing for him he didn't make two ball. So he's trying to make up his mind between kicking the two ball and jumping. And as we already said, he's very good with his jump stick. successful in that attempt as he was on the first attempt. Excellent camera work on that bridge hand, though. No, yeah. we, le we learned that he's married and sponsored <laughs> by Kamui in three seconds. Well, Kopin Yi has a shot at the two. And pretty, op pretty open table. Yeah, he has a choice to go after the pocket or before, and he did go after, which was safer. Now it's pretty natural angle to go to the four and bring it off to the rail on the rail to go to the five, six. No more problems on the table. We're talking about co. While the, the story in men's pool was obviously Fedor and, and Francisco, Copin Yi had himself a good year as well. He finished first at the Predator Bucharest, Bucharest Open. He was third at the World Cup of Pool. He won the Asian Nine Ball Open back in August. And he was third at the International Open. So it's a pretty strong season for him. Yeah as he works his way through this rack and works his way towards a three to one lead in this race to eight, one loss side matchup. Again, the winner of this match goes on to face Francisco Sanchez Ruiz for a chance to get into the final 32 tomorrow. As Co rattles at home, increases his lead back to two games. Equipment we're playing on here this week is Predator Apex nine foot pool tables using the Predator Arcos two billiard balls. As you see the referee there in the far right corner of the screen racking the balls, he's racking them with the Predator Arrow Rack and he's racking them on the Predator Arcadia Reserve Performance Cloth. So Predator once again expanding their product line in the past couple of years. Yeah, they come up with a lot of new stuff. Especially in the past couple of years with the introduction of the balls and the cloth, the rack, and also in recent uh, past 12 months, 12 to 18 months, the tables. Yeah. Tables with LED lights underneath. and chalks. So if you're looking for a table at home that also will double as a nightclub, <laughs> this is your table. Because I do, I love it. I love it. I love it too. I actually suggested, <laughs> you know, to change the color for um, for the color of the ball that's being played right now. But I think uh, it's too much, but I think it was <laughs> it's just a fun idea. Well, what did you want to change? How did you want to change it? Just, you know, depending on what color of the ball you're playing on the table, you change the color underneath the table. Like if it's a one ball, you, you make it yellow. Yellow. And Two will be blue. blue. Three will red. It would be a lot of work though, but. Somebody would have to be in charge of that. Yeah. Okay, he's looking at the safety here. Bring the one ball 
on the short rail and cue ball behind 10 and 5. No? Okay, that's... It was a different choice, I guess. It was pretty standard position. Looking at the, the angle from up top, is the kick and stick there? I think so. I think he can see it, even if he would like to be aggressive to cut the six ball in. But something tells me he's going to try kick and stick, as you said. Oh, no, he actually seen the full ball. A little bit too hard, and he sold That's out. The, that is the second time, maybe even the third time, that we've seen him misplay position on an attempt at a safety. Yeah, it's, uh, I think the previous game he was under rolling a lot, and now it's overall. Maybe he's getting comfortable with the table. As Atencio goes for the cut on the one, comes up a bit short. And he leaves an opening on that one. So Co returns to the table. Has to be a little elevator. Elevated. Yeah, elevated over that seven ball, correct? Yeah, so he's taking extra time to prepare well for this shot. Because it's a key shot in this rack. As you can see, there's no problems on the table. Would be the only difficulty in here. Getting down in that stance, trying to make sure to not touch that seven ball. Undercut it. Undercut it, but no, he didn't get lucky. It looks like Atencio can see the edge of that one ball, making it cuttable. Not an easy cut by any stretch, but it is still cuttable. Cuttable and pretty natural position for the two ball, playing right. in the same corner as the one ball. That we're just taking turns on this one ball at this point. Now, but this time he doesn't have the edge. I'm sorry to interrupt you. <laughs> it's all right. I just wanted to say this time he didn't get quite fortune with the one ball because Cole can still see and even tried to play successful safety shot. And that was probably one of the best safety efforts we've seen out of Ko so far. Pinning that cue ball on the four and having the one ball blocked by the seven. And Atencio not hesitating at all, walks to the table immediately with that jump cue. Very you well played. You mentioned his proficiency with that jump cue. I believe it was last year that we had one of the most miraculous shots at, I don't think it was this event, but I think it was the Alpha Las Vegas Open. It was Jesus Atencia who executed that double jump shot in that one match. Yeah, it was blow mind-blowing. Mind-blowing. And another great safety, jump safety. Wow. Flirted with the corner pocket there, but got away with it. Look at this position. More than got away with it. <laughs> he put him in a trap. See him shaking his head. But he played the, played the right shot, and he had all the rights to get a little fortune in here. No, I don't think he can see. Two little nudges off that six and that seven ball, and Atencio appears to be in jail right now. Maybe Marseille. 
Oh, he's not completely hooked. Hooked enough that it brought a double kiss into play. Now, do you think he, he well, tried to cut it in? I was going to say this one ball is cuttable. But the question is, where does the cue ball go? Yeah. I think he he might try to play the safety on the right side of the one ball. I think cut, but no. Yeah, I think cut. Sometimes it's confusing me because when I play follow, I always aim on the top. Mm -hmm. And a lot of players, when they tr attempt to play follow, they actually aim lower in the ball. That's why sometimes I'm like, hmm, interesting. What, what shot they're going to play? There are some players that when they are looking to strike the cue ball low, they are aiming so low that I don't know how they don't go underneath the ball. Yeah. Especially sometimes when they draw and they go right in the in the cloth. And that's yeah, the tip is just going like basically gliding across the top of the cloth. And all I can think is if I would try to do that, the cue ball would go <laughs> off the table and down the street. Off the window. Out, yeah. It looks like he has an edge. He can definitely see the one ball. It's about if he can mix it in the side pocket. Maybe, you know, one of these shots when you when the, the ball is in the edge of the pocket and you try to power it in. No, no needs. One ball goes straight in. So the battle of safeties on the one ball is completed with Atencio, the victor. And he has position to pocket the two ball on the opposite end of the table in the opposite corner pocket. And as you had said about this rack before, there's no real issues here. Yeah, no real difficulties. I guess now it's only coming from the four to the five. I believe five ball passes the turn to go in the left corner. So Could go in either corner from here. So yeah, he looks to be good to go. It's just a matter of execution. Ooh. See the, I feel like the five ball was only going in half of the pocket and he tried to cheat in, in this other half and over tried. Any consolation, he didn't exactly leave an easy shot for his opponent. Cue ball near the rail. And he has Guarded to by that control. seven, so he has to go down into that corner if he's going to try to pocket it. Got a really nice bounce off that six ball. But it's straight in. That could have been. Yeah, but it's straight in and. He has to bring cue ball off the, the rail, otherwise it's going to be really hard to cut the seven ball. Maybe it's not straight in. No, nah, I think he has just enough angle. Very well played. The weight of all those precious metals in the queue chopping down on the ball allowed him to come out. I think I, uh, I mentioned in my first game I was doing commentary that mm -hmm. a lot of times um, you can see Asian, only Asian players having this uh, little towel, wet towel. And mm -hmm. whenever they execute pretty hard shot or 
you know, when they need to shake off mm -hmm. their minds, they go back to the chair, they touch this little wet towel. It's not even like doing anything. You, they just touch it and go back to the table, like reset. It's a very nice tip. Meanwhile, four ball, uh, ten ball goes in for four one lead. And there's that towel you were talking about. Yeah, always wet, always in there. Have you ever asked any of them what that is about? Do you think it may be a, a, a climate thing from playing in Far East Asia? I don't know, but uh, I know a lot of like it's not only like China, Taipei, it's mm -hmm. also Korea and Japan and Philippines, like a lot of Asian players doing that. And I think it's just to, you know, kind of more sad and I don't know. Now with the Filipino players, what I've always heard is that the, um, the island is very humid. A lot of people We're back here at the Rio All Suites Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas. Player timeout as Ko Pin Yi leads Jesus Atencio four to one in this one loss side matchup. Looking at some other scores from around the room as we await Jesus coming back, and there he is. Mickey Krause with a three two lead over Roberto Gomez. Again, these are all one loss side matches. Lucius Yap with a 3-0 advantage over Daniel Gutenberg. Max Lechner leading Jeffrey DeLuna 3-1. It's over on table number five. As Copigny is about to break with a 5-1 lead. He's halfway home in this race to eight. clean hit but was unable to pocket anything from what I saw. No balls in. Good thing for him, he didn't leave anything. That's kind of been his uh, story throughout this match is that he's not been successful with the break but when he walks away there's no clear shot at the one. We end up with either push outs or safety exchanges like we just had. And he's pushing out again. Again, tempting Ko with that jump cue. Teasing him. Yeah. Oh, 
and Cole trying his luck to pocket this one ball. And I think he's very favored to make it. With a very natural position for the two ball after that. Very well. Pockets it cleanly, and he has got shape on the one. Or excuse me, got shape on the two after pocketing the one. It does look like there's some difficulty on that side of the table. With yeah, that the three ball doesn't pass the ten. Right. And you have that four ball and that eight ball bunched up along the rail. But I think he can play four and eight combination if he makes it that really appears, close. That appears to be what he's playing to do. Looks like he's playing to draw the cue ball back for position for a 4-8 combo. Perfect position for that combination shot. Because with that cue ball where it is, that four ball shouldn't move too much after shouldn't. it makes impact with that eight. A little stretch. That's why it's very important to stretch for pool players to have this flexibility. Nicely done. So what would be your path to get from the five ball? First of all, what pocket are you going into with the five ball? I guess he answered that question. He came out for the five and he'll go down two rails for the six. Yeah, probably he will. If he has enough angle just to go around a 10 ball, avoiding the nine and going into the long rail. So it's two, perhaps three rails. Three rails. Multiple rails. Multiple <laughs> rails. Well, let's see if he has enough angle to come off the rail, but the good thing seven ball is it's practically hanging, hanging in, that in the side pocket. pocket. So you don't really have to play very good shape with the seven. And he can just roll this in because the nine is right there. Chooses to go down a rail rather than try and hold position. Should just be a stop shot here or maybe he'll come over a couple inches. No, he drew it back. And the tumble in. As Copigny takes a commanding 5-1 lead in this match. Interesting, as I'm looking at his shirt, it's not often that you see players sponsored by themselves. If you look on the one sleeve, yeah. he has a co-logo. He and his brother have teamed up with the manufacturer over in Chinese Taipei. They've come up with their own line of Q-tips, and then also, I believe they're working on a jump cue as well. They do. They do. It's, it's really great to see players coming up. As we see his brother, Ko Ping yeah. Chung. And Ko Ping Han from the right. So it's great to see when players coming up with their own cue lines and uh, their own kind of business, you know. So they don't have to be sponsored by someone. They can be their own sponsors. They just recently came out with that Q-tip line last year. So Co at the break again, leading five to one. Eight ball rolled right in. It looks like that three is blocking the path to the one. Yes, it does. Which has to be frustrating because it looks like that 1-5 combination is completely wired in. 
He, he might try to. Looks like he's trying to go it? one rail. This guy is playing QL. Co with a five rack lead, getting a little bit aggressive here, going for this combination. And Very it works well out done. for him. Not only did he pocket the five, it was perfect shape for that one ball in the opposite corner. Exactly. No real interference on this table. He looks to be in pretty good shape to increase his lead to 6 1. And Jesus Atencio is going to be running out of chances here pretty shortly. Yeah, you don't want to leave any open window for players like Jesus Atencio for him to sneak in. You never know when it's winner's break, how many packs your opponent can put in you. Puts the four in the side. Good angle on the six to get down table for the seven. Starting to make it look easy. Yeah, you can definitely see he's very comfortable on the table. Plays low right to bring that cue ball back for the ten ball. And he's now one shot away from a 6-1 lead in a race to eight. Rolls it home, 6-1 Co. We'll be back after these messages. You're watching the World 10 Ball Championships live from Las Vegas. Copin Yi at the break with a 6-1 commanding lead over Jesus Atencio. Two racks away from advancing on the one loss side here at the WPA Men's World 10 Ball Championship. Once again, spreads them cle clearly, but was unable to pocket a ball on the break. And again, Jesus Atencio with no real shot at the one. No, not really. He's got to be thinking to himself, what do I have to do to get an opening around here? Well, sometimes you got to earn your openings. Your right. openings with these top players. Atencio again calls for a push out. You can hear the chatter around the room. This event is being played in conjunction with the BCA Pool League's World Championships. Yesterday we had 7,000 league players here competing in the team championships. So pretty crazy? busy day and yeah. pretty packed. And really the perfect day to pull a fire alarm at 10 o'clock at night. 
Yeah, we, we caught that. <laughs> if you weren't watching yesterday, a fire alarm was pulled and we had a 15 minute delay in our match with Ralph Suke and Riku. Match won by Ralph, eight to six. Jesus pushes out here and Christina, what do you think he's looking at? I would imagine a safety. Yeah, the safety. question is where? Cubo behind three and nine. And well, it well, leaked a little bit and he's steady. Le appears he may have left a bank shot into the side pocket. Well, even though he has a lot of lead, I, I would still think he would play defense to just keep the pressure on your opponent, not giving again any open windows. And that's what he's doing. Another part of that is, um, I've heard this from multiple players, these predator tables have only been out on the market for about a year, year and a half. A lot of players don't know how they react yet, and so they're not as comfortable banking on these tables. A lot of players feel that, like they bank differently than other manufacturers, so that would take, I would imagine that would remove some confidence if you're, if you're considering a bank shot, if you don't know how the rails are going to react. Well, that's true, but it's not like every rail reacts different, right? They mm -hmm. can either play short or long right. and there's no other things and once you figure out how how it plays you can make your little adjustments and still feel be fine we've seen that in a match of Skylar Woodward even though he lost his match but he banked all the balls he played yeah. Skylar's one of the best bank players in the game exactly as Jesus attempts to pocket that one ball comes up a bit short but also didn't leave his opponent anything. Ko has his jump cue out. Wow, Makes look contact. at this accuracy. It's deadly <laughs> stop the cue ball. A jumping kick and stick. Yeah. And Jesus pulls out his jump cue. So now it's a fight of jump it's sticks. A, it's, a, it's a jump stick safety exchange. Yes. And you know what? If he hits it good, he has a big chance to have the cue ball before seven and two, I wanted to say, but he hit it way too thin. Hit it way too thin. Sells out the one. And Co has an opening to get from the one to the two to the two to the three. Do you see any real problems on this table, Christina? No, I think if he's going to make it from two to three and then create a good angle, or perhaps leave it straight in, what you're basically looking for, he should be fine. That two ball was a bit tense. Yeah, <laughs> but he played it soft enough for the mm -hmm. ball to go in anyway. So now he's looking where to end up with the cue ball and where he's going to pocket the five. Is it going to be side pocket or the corner? He's looking at the corner. No. No really reasons to take a chance to try to make the five ball inside. To try to play position for the five on the side. Because you have to be very accurate in there. But looks like he didn't pick make up his mind. <laughs> <laughs> Pointing out all the possibilities <laughs> where to play the five ball. A little bit of paralysis through analysis. <laughs> so let's see which one he's going to choose. So he's going high left. He's going right for that five in the side. That's what I told you. He was very nervous. He, he could let himself hoop 
behind the nine, but also he created a wrong angle in the five, so. I was gonna say, the question yeah. is. You'll have to play six ball in the other corner. Still fine, but you see it's all shaky decision on the four. Mm -hmm. And now there are so many problems on the table where it was wide open. Right. It's like a snowball, mm -hmm. right? Sometimes I feel like it's not the shot, it's the shot before the shot. Yeah, or shot the shot before the shot. <laughs> now the original sin was pocketing that four ball in a corner pocket and not coming over far enough for the five. Yeah. So now he's got to scramble a little bit. Although he's still in good shape with this cut shot down the rail on the seven. Ooh. And we jinxed him. Who would expect him to miss this kind of shot? But again, it's it's a snowball effect, even though it wasn't a relatively easy shot, but you know, it was way too many hard shots in, in before. As Atencio cuts in that seven ball, is it a scenario where you work so hard to get back in line that once you do get back in line psychologically you kind of let down a little bit and say okay I'm good and then it leads to that because that wasn't difficult from a pro standpoint that seven ball no that's actually a, a good point I never thought about it maybe that's something to be with mental where you just had to focus on a couple of shots so much that you take the easy yeah. one for granted. Yeah. So what could have been a 7-1 lead for Copigny is now 6-2. And instead of Co being at the table, breaking for the win, he'll be sitting in his chair watching the CF Atencio can chop away at that deficit a little bit more. As you see more of the league players filtering in. Check out some of the action. And of course, the minute I say that, one guy gets up and walks out. <laughs> So there's a lot of quite interesting matches going on. Want to give a score update? Yeah, so it's uh, Miki Krauser is 4-4 four four with Verde Gomez. And Lossias Yap is up 3-2 to two versus Daniel Gutenberger from Austria. Austrian Mark Lechner is up 4-1 to one versus De Luna. And we're back on the table. Two balls in, finally. But is there any open shot on the one ball? Yeah, he yeah. can definitely see that one and he can definitely see that corner pocket. The only issue I see on the table is maybe the five and the eight being so close together. But it looks like that five ball might slide by the eight into the corner. Yeah, I'm pretty sure five ball passes the nine at the eight. He'll pocket the cue ball into that right hand side corner. Excuse me, the three ball into that right hand side corner pocket with the cue ball. If he pocketed the cue ball, we'd have a real problem on our hands. Well, he <laughs> would have a real problem on our hands. Yeah, but uh, he's looking to take this cue ball down to the bottom rail. He obviously wants to leave himself an angle to get back down table to wedge in between that six and that seven. As he he called the five ball, smiling. Smiling, so he must, he must know it goes. 
Maybe only half a pocket. No. It's pretty good. And there's really nice shape on that six ball. Now you gotta think of quite a good angle in the seven to go for the eight and it's pretty much done. Comes out to the center of the table and I would imagine he's gonna be using low left to come back one rail for this eight ball. Nicely done. And then he'll just drift back up table for the 10. As that cue ball rolls into position. Takes his time, sets up his shot. And missed seven ball by Copin Yi has now cost him two games. Now six to three in a race to eight. And then the winner of this match will go on to face Francisco Sanchez Ruiz for a shot at the final 32, which will begin tomorrow. Tomorrow switches from double elimination to single elimination. And we're going to lengthen the races as well. We're going to go from a race to eight to a race to 10. Tomorrow we'll go from 32 players down to four, and then those four players will compete in the semifinals and then the finals. Starting at, I believe, 10.30 local time on Saturday. I think so. 10.30 or 10. So Tensio at the table again, breaking down six to three. Still trying to claw his way back into this match. One, one ball in. One ball in. And I'm pretty sure he, he can cut the two. The two ball. He can cut the two, but that, that five ball rolling over top of the cue ball, now you have to bridge over top of the five and cut. You're right. And make sure you have a good angle on the three because you you're going to come up way too much one two on the right. third rail uh there is a big possibility for the scratch on the three ball in the side pocket so has to be very precise or perhaps he'll try to just play the safety no nope cut it Offense mm -hmm. all the way. Now he gets the bridge over the seven ball. A little bit, but I, I don't think it should bother Shouldn't him. Shouldn't bother him. Very good shot. It's very hard shot under the pressure with a shot clock. So he's taking it as extension. He's going to look this one over a little bit more. Yeah, it's not quite easy because normally you would like to go cross over mm -hmm. two rails and come back in the center of the table but as you can see the eight ball is hanging in there you don't want to run in this eight ball and you can really also stun the ball because as i mentioned of the side pocket oh wow you try to just bank it in Not sure I agree with the uh, strategy there. And he left 3-4 combination for Cop and E. Oh and uh, he's going for it. I'm sure there were concerns that if he tried to cut that three ball into that corner pocket and he left it, he was going to leave a real hanger. So maybe this was an attempt at more of a two-way shot with the idea being that if he missed, the, cue ball, the three ball would roll somewhere where he would never shot. Well, it's not an easy, uh, not an easy combination, but also he has to cut it on the left side, which makes the three ball travel towards the six ball. 
Yeah, you see he tried to make sure the three ball come off these balls. And look at his, at his face expression. It seems like he fell out the three ball. But he's straight in. No angle to come off the rail. So I guess it has to be long draw shot back to play four ball into the right corner. Uh -oh. Watch out, uh -oh. watch out for the five ball. Barely made it. Do you think that's the side of the five he wanted to be on? Yeah, I, I don't think he had any other angle to go. Do you think he wanted range. to come back further? I think he wanted to come back further and he wanted to shoot it straighter so the cue ball had no chances to even hit the five ball. But pocketed well. I was going to say pocketed that like it was. I think we were more concerned about it than he was. <laughs> yeah. And he has a nice angle yes. on that five. I imagine he's going to go down one rail and come back for position on the six. Yeah, the the only possible problem would be it's eight and nine, because eight ball does not pass the nine to go into the corner. So he will either try to go and bump in eight ball now, which be kind of dangerous. What he's looking at. Yeah, because yeah, you could hook yourself be behind the eight ball. Correct. Or be very good and run out this rock. So tried to bump it. Bump didn't it touch a little it. bit. Yeah. yeah. Now he, I believe he will have to try. Maybe play in the back in the center of the table to bank the eight ball on the side. Let's see what he will come up with. Yeah, that's, that's what he's doing. He's playing the bank. And I can tell you he's also a very good banker. So he's very favorite to make this ball. All he has to look after this cue ball, if he's going to play follow, might bump into the nine. Well, he didn't play follow and scratch. But he might be banking again here. He cut it in. The only problem is ten ball on the other side right, of the table. Other side of the table, right? Yeah. Did he call the bank? No. He's going to cut it in, low right. Trying to pass the side pocket and he did it just enough. Again, I think we were more stressed out about yeah. it than he was. So a bank and a really tight cut by Atencio, and suddenly six one. Has become 6 4. Yeah, and uh, Copini taking time out. Copini saying, I want to stop this momentum yeah. right now. You got to stop this momentum. As we watch that bank again, and we'll be back right after these advertisements. You're watching the WPA Men's World 10 Ball Championship.
We're back to live action here at the Rio All Suites Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas. If you're just joining us. Copen Yikim jumped out to an early 6-1 advantage and had an opportunity to clear the table and make it 7-1 and miss the seven ball. And Jesus Atencio has come back in a big way. He's won three in a row. Cut the lead to six to four, now breaking to cut into that lead a little bit more. Four ball in, eight ball in. And he's got a, he's got a shot at the one. And no difficulties on the table. Let's see. Other than maybe the one. No, I think from this angle, it seems pretty fine. My concern would be bumping the two after pocketing the one. I think he can I go around okay. easily. It's pretty natural. Just to add a little bit of the right spin. Look at you proving me wrong. Not that it's that hard to do. <laughs> So he has good shape here to come across the table for the three after pocketing the two. And like you were saying, no real obstructions. As we get a view of Jesus Atencio's cue made by Mez. And tattoo on the wrist saying hope. Hope. He's hoping to clear this rack and trim that deficit to 6-5. He rolls into perfect position for that five ball. Now it's the matter of how big of an angle he's going to create himself in the six. He doesn't want to make it way too big. A little bit straight in on that. I think he even good has shape. a different yep. side of the six ball, which I think is still fine. He can cut the seven ball in the corner. He might try to cut it in the side, but depending on how big the angle is. He may, yeah. Well, no, he's, he's looking probably to play it in the corner. Yep. across the table for position on that nine. And we are one ball away from this being a one rack advantage for Ko Pin Yi. That's what I said, you don't want to leave any open windows for player who can put a couple packs on you. And look what happened. Suddenly the momentum just a completely switched. A missed seven ball has been a four yeah. game difference. Actually a five game difference. Yeah. Instead of being seven one, one up, now it's six to five. And this was breaking and it feels like his break working out pretty good. So we wouldn't be surprised if he will find himself with an open table after this break as well. Referee checking the balls to make sure they're all touching. Sets the rack down. We're get ready to go. Jesus Atencio now breaking to tie the score. Trailing six to five. Four, Four ball, ball in. in. Look at where that one ball's going. One ball rolls in the position, so he has a shot at the one. And a shot at the pocket. three. That's. He'll try to bring this cue ball back in the center, probably trying to either draw it, cheating the pocket a little bit, like that. He could follow as well. So what do you do with the three? Because you have that two ball. The two ball's going to go in that corner pocket that's closest to us. Well, he, he has to 
either try to play follow with inside spin, very come out two rails, come up to one, two, three rails, or trying to play a very hard, powerful stun shot to go two rails after the center pocket. And I think he's looking at the follow. He could also play and then uh, just to pocket the two ball and then have very good safety mm. option, but... And look at that, he <laughs> hooked the two ball. <laughs> this is what we were talking about, the momentum. And so Atencio misses the two, but comes up a bit lucky here as it rolls behind that five. Although yeah. it looks like he can see an edge of it, just not all of it. Edge to play crossover. Bank called it just in case. Trying to bring the cue ball on the other side of the table. No yawning in this booth. I don't know what you're talking about. hesitating a little bit because there's a high chance for a double kiss the cue ball and the two ball he played oh so Ko misses the cross side bank and it looks like he's left an opening he's definitely left a ball that's hanging I'm not quite sure did he try to go offensive and really make this bank or he just missed the speed for Safety shot. It's hard to say. Well, one thing's for certain, Ko has been struggling with his table speed all day. He had Correct. a couple safety attempts early in this match where he just left wide open options instead of burying the ball, which I believe was his initial plan. And now... Atencio um, again. Doesn't look like there's really any real impediments on this table. And out of the... His body language and attitude around the table, you can see he's very confident. He feels the light in the end of the tunnel. And right now, mentally, he's definitely in a better place than Kopin E that left an that missed an opportunity to go in the hill and most likely win this set. short on that seven ball. I don't think he wanted that sharp of an angle. I don't think he wanted that cue ball over that far on that side of the table. But if there's one thing he's shown, it's that he can cut balls down rails. Very just well like executed. that. So effortlessly. The touch of inside spin, he find himself in a very good position with the 8, 9, and 10 to close up the gap. I believe for the first time in this game. Yeah, Ko jumped out to a 2 nothing lead. Jesus won the third rack. And then lost. Well, he won that rack on a push out. Unless and then lost four straight in. Sensio wins five consecutive games to tie this match six games apiece. And he'll have the break for his first lead. And suddenly a race to eight has become a race to two. As we see Ko Pinyi, who's probably thinking about what went wrong on that seven ball and what's really gone wrong since he missed it. Again, the winner of this match will face world pool champion Francisco Sanchez Ruiz in the next round with the chance to go to the final 32 tomorrow on the line as we switch to single elimination and races to 10. Yeah. 
six ball didn't go in that's along with the one ball. That's the first. Oh, it was so that's close. It was the first break. It looks like he took a little bit off the break that time. But good thing for him, he did not leave any open shot for Cove. That had been in the chair for quite a long time already. I guess that I mean, he has this playing cue in his hand, which tells me he's not considering a jump. No. If anything, he's considering a push out. Yeah, he can um, definitely play cue ball in a short rail because the one ball doesn't pass the three ball. But you know what? He left a shot, not an easy one, but to cut the one ball into the left corner. And a left very of a natural, yeah, yeah, very natural position for the two because the cue ball will run into three and there is no danger for scratch. And that's exactly what he's looking at. Is that and the push out you would have played in this situation I or what would I you have looked at? I think I would. At? Yeah, it's look like he's at that. made it. And he did not hook himself. He apologized to be a little lucky. And also he kind of nine off the table yeah, as well. Kind of spread out the position. And now the only thing is three to four and five to six. More, let's say three to four. This again a situation where you're going to come out two rails off this three ball to pocket the four. Yeah, he again he has an option to stun or to follow, but if he wants to follow, it has to be stun follow as well, because otherwise he will run into the ten ball. So I would probably try to play the stun shot. This for exactly what he's looking at in between ten and six. I feel like it's just more secure. Just like that, beautiful. I think his adrenaline right now just pumping up. Adrenaline and confidence, and how could you not be confident after winning five straight racks? Yeah. Cuts the four ball in cleanly and comes back across table for five. I would imagine he's going to play this for some high left. left. High left and come out. Yeah. But it's also a very touchy shot. You can't really play it very sharp. Otherwise, because the, the balls are very new and clean, right? What happens a lot of times, the cue ball stays in the same spot. It just s slips, or how do you call it? I don't know how to explain. Slide? Yeah, slide and the, the, the follow slides a lot and stays in the same position. So you want to kind of slow roll it and let the spin do the work. Cuts in that six and it looks like he's going to have a similar setup here on the seven. Yeah, not the easiest six or seven. There's definitely room for a mistake in here. And there it is. Just and one. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. He just undercut, under rolled the four ball a little bit to the five to have a very natural angle to go for the six. And again, it's not a seven ball really. It's not really the six ball. It was the four ball. So coping he back to the table with a hanger. And a chance to get on the hill first after camping out in his seat for the last five racks.
right in the heart of the pocket. And interestingly enough, it was a seven ball for Copin Yi that he missed in that corner that allowed Atencio back to the table to win five straight. When Atencio had the opportunity to get on the hill, what did he miss? Cut shot on the seven ball. So seven ball not really doing any favors for either of these competitors. As Copin Yi gets on the hill first, seven to six, and he'll be breaking for a chance to win the match. You see the referee using the Predator arrow rack to rack the Predator Arcos two billiard balls. As Ko is ready to go in this 14th rack of play on the one loss side. question becomes now, well, how is he going to hit the balls after having sat for as long as he did? Yeah, let's take a look. He hit them pretty good, but no ball. <laughs> He's got oh, that hand on the hip, which means <laughs> I don't care what country <laughs> you originate from. You got the hand on the hip. You're not pleased. No. And not only that, he got a hand on the hip because he left an open shot of the one, too. And open table. And one more chance for Jesus Atencio to get in the hill. Is that an issue for, pr for players of your caliber when you've been sitting in the chair for a while? Now you win a rack, now you have the break, but you haven't been breaking for the past 20 to 25 minutes or so. The arm's not loose. Is it an issue? I don't know. It's or is it something where, it, you know. It might definitely affect your break or your game, for sure. As he sets up for three ball in the side pocket, although he doesn't look real comfortable with it. No, I think he made an angle for the three ball a little way too much than he wanted to because I re he, if he really wants to find his cue ball next to the seven ball from the left side of the four to have a natural angle to go for the five. Otherwise, it's, it's going to be very, very difficult to bring the cue ball in the shot for the five. Just like that. It's pretty good. Now to go probably in the short bottom rail with a lot of left spin in between 10 and 9. Just like that. We solve all the difficulties in this, in this table. And I don't see where we can not hope, of course, where we could expect him to make a mistake. Right. Just everything is wide open. And is the angle to come back over a little bit for that eight ball? Yeah. Four balls to get on the hill. Not first anymore, but it doesn't matter if you have such an advantage as the break. We will go to a match deciding 15th rack. And we'll be back after these messages for the match decider right here at the World 10 Ball Championship.
we're back for the match deciding rack. In this match between Copin Yi and Jesus Atencio. Two ball in and very unfortunate for the one ball to land up on a different side of the table with no clear shot. So just to recap, Copen Yi jumped out to an early 2-0 lead. Jesus tacked a game on to cut it to 2-1. And then He's not happy because he left the jump. Yes, he did. And this one ball hanging right in front of the pocket. So Copen Yi is very fortunate. Fortunate. Very likely to pocket this ball. Copin Yi had a 6 1 lead at one point until he missed a seven ball that would have put him in position to go up 7 to 1. And he missed it, and he's going to leave a shot. Look at that. What a chance for Jesus Atencio to win this match after trailing six racks to one. It's a lot of pressure. And it's now it's a matter only if he's going to be able to manage his nerves, really, because he should be favored to run this table, even though with little difficulties on the five, but His caliber should be favorite to run this table. His caliber, and he's had all the momentum in the second half of this match. A little bit of a rub on the eight ball, on the cue ball coming across for the four, but again, we've seen him make much more difficult cut shots than this in this match. That being said, this is the match deciding game, so anything can happen. Maybe he's looking at to cut the four ball on the side and then play the bank on the five. Or he's looking at the cue ball direction after he's going to cut it in the corner, just like that. Oof. And now he Still has. Still pretty easy bank. Not, of course, the result he was hoping for. Probably he wanted to bump the five ball. But. Very makeable. And he called the side pocket, so he is going to play for the bank. And he made it. Perfectly banked, and with that six ball sitting right there. Jesus Atencio is in the driver's seat to complete this comeback. Again, was down six to one at one point. So Copin Yi missed a cut shot on a seven ball. And Atencio won seven, excuse me, won five straight to tie the match at six. Then missed a seven ball of his own. That's why seven was in my head. Copin Yi came back. Take a seven, six advantage. Then broke dry. Atencio had a clear table, pocketed everything and ran out to go hill hill, and now here we are. He is short on the 10 ball. No. No, he's great. He's great. I can imagine the nerves right now. What a comeback oh. by Jesus Atencio. Down 6-1. Takes advantage of a missed shot by Copin Yi and comes all the way back. Defeats the former world champion from Chinese Taipei, eight to seven. He will now move on to the next round where he will face Francisco Sanchez Ruiz with a chance to get to the final 32, which will begin tomorrow.
for Christina Takach. I'm Keith Paradise. Good working with Thank you again, Christina. Thank you so Christina. much, guys. We'll Thank see you, you later. Thank see you. See you later.